this point, you should now have an assembly of the Stirling engine in the large central portion of the screen, called the Graphical User Interface, or GUI. I will quickly say, if your model doesn't look as shiny as mine, don't worry, we will get into that in the next lesson. In the GUI, we can look at the model from any angle we want. One way to rotate the model is to use the arrow keys on your keyboard. Try it. Rotate left, rotate right, up, and down. Or you can press and hold the middle mouse wheel and move the mouse around. Sometimes when rotating the model with the mouse, you may find yourself getting to the extents of the screen so you have to release and move back onto the screen and continue rotating. Now, if your finger slipped while on the mouse scroll wheel, you may have noticed that the scroll wheel controls the zoom. Scrolling your wheel up will move the model away from you, and scrolling the wheel down will move the model towards you. But the scroll wheel controls more than just the zoom. We call this dynamic zoom. The reason it's called dynamic zoom is the zoom is happening around the center of the cursor. So if you hold the cursor over a screw and scroll down, it'll zoom into the screw, even if it was off to the side of the model. What if I want to see the whole model again? Well, if I press the F key on my keyboard, I will fit the model to my screen. Use your scroll wheel again to scroll the model away from you until it is as tiny as a little dot. And press the F key. Just like that, the model returns to the center of the screen in full view. So remember, the F key is your friend for any time you've lost the view of your model. What I want to do next is zoom into the front face of the flywheel and click it when you see a green square icon next to your cursor. The green square icon meant you were selecting a planar or flat face. With the flat face selected, you should now have a white, in context, toolbar displayed. On the in context toolbar, there's an icon of a blue square with a black arrow pointing up. When you hover over it, the description states that this is the normal two icon. Click it. You should now be looking normal to the face that you selected. Remember this only works in the case of a flat or planar face. You should also notice that the normal to command fits the model to the screen at the same time. So it's a combination of the F key or fit and we're looking at it normal to. Now, let's rotate the part down using the arrows or the mouse, whatever you prefer, so that we're no longer looking directly at the model. This time we're going to use what's called the Heads Up toolbar in the top center of the graphics area. Click the icon of a cube with one blue face and two red arrows to expand the view orientation flyout. Here, we also have a normal two icon. And when we hover over it, we can see that Control-8 is the shortcut for the Normal-2 command. Now we've already used the Normal-2 command, so instead let's try a standard view icon. How about the top view? We should now be looking directly at the top of the model. So not only can you dynamically rotate the model, you can also rotate the model to defined orientations, such as the front, top, or side. I want to show you another trick. At the beginning of our lesson, we rotated the model with the arrow keys. This time, I want you to hold down the shift key on your keyboard and tap the up arrow. What did you notice? You should have noticed that by holding shift, you forced the arrow keys to rotate the model 90 degrees for each time you tap the arrow. So if you ever want to go from a front view to a top view, just hold down shift and press the down arrow. There are a few other ways we can access the view commands. Hitting the spacebar gives us access to an orientation window with standard views as well as the ability to add our own standard views. So if there's an orientation you want to be able to return to later, you can add that orientation and come back to it anytime you want. Moving on, right-clicking in free space away from the model gives you access to the standard views, as well as the ability 
to zoom to a specific area. Let's try it. By clicking, dragging, and releasing. Of course, we can also access the zoom command from the Heads Up toolbar. In the bottom left corner, we have what's called a triad. When you click any of the axes on the triad, we're going to be looking directly at that axis. So let's go ahead and try clicking one of those axes. A feature that's new to SOLIDWORKS 2010 is mouse gestures. To use mouse gestures, we right click and hold in an empty portion of the graphics area. While holding, move your mouse slightly upwards. You should now see a circle divided into four quadrants. By moving the pointer over a given quadrant, you activate the specific command. In later lessons, we'll look at how we customize mouse gestures, but for now, it's simply important that we know that they are there. So if you slip with the right mouse button down, you're going to know what happened. Additionally, 3D Connection does sell a 3D mouse that allows you to pan, zoom, and rotate all at once by holding onto a control knob with your hand that you don't use for your mouse. Throughout the training, I will be using a Space Pilot by 3D Connection, which will result in clean fluid manipulation of my model. Of course, having one of these devices is by no means necessary, but if you'd like to get one, there is a link in your SOLIDWORKS assembly file to a location where you can purchase one. Next, I'd like to show you the live section view. This is also going to demonstrate that we are working with a solid model. The section view icon is found on the Heads Up toolbar and looks like a cylindrical bushing cut in half. Click it to activate it, and now we can use the drag handles to determine where the section is going through the model. On the left hand side, we see the properties for the section view. And here, we can determine the orientation of the section view. Or, we can even select a planar face on the model to define the orientation. If we'd like to keep the section view active, we could select the green check mark in the top right corner. But in this case, I'm just showing you where to find the section view, and we're going to go ahead and select the red X to cancel out. Next to the view orientation icon on the Heads Up toolbar, we have the display icon that looks like a cube only half shaded in blue. Click it. From here, we can display our model shaded with edges as it is now, without edges, or just by edges. I'm going to put my model back to being shaded with edges. Now before we move on to looking at the specifics of an assembly, I would like you to take a few minutes to explore the various view commands and menus that I showed you. Remember, you can't break anything. Worst case scenario, you're just going to need to close the file down without saving any of your changes. When you're done manipulating the file around and you feel comfortable with all of the view commands, leave the assembly file open because we are still going to be using it in the next segment.